it's white to move and what would you play here? If you try doubling the rooks by rook h5 and at the same time attacking g5, it wouldn't be so efficient because bishop comes back to e7, defends the pawn, and if you double it now, there's bishop f6, and this is a very good defensive setup by black. Because if you attack the bishop by rook h6, there's gonna be king g7, and after check, king g8, there's not much danger in this position because if you bring the other rook, there's bishop g7. This rook has to move back, but then the bishop moves back. h8 is defended pretty well. g5 pawn is defended, so black is quite solid here. On the next move, black can go rook a e8, even escape with the king. Maybe even create a counterplay, because these two rooks are not doing too much at the moment, and black is defending only with the bishop, so he actually has two rooks as a resource for attack, for some initiative. So we saw that rook h5 is not so good because of bishop e7, bishop f6. So what can you do as white? Well, you can try to dislodge the pawns on the king side by playing f6. Also disabling black from having bishop e7, bishop f6. And what's even more dangerous, some ideas like rook h7, doubling the rooks, even though that's not possible right now because black always has this defensive idea of rook e1 exchanging a pair of rooks. But the idea of capturing this pawn remains alive. The g5 pawn becomes a huge target. Now white has the idea to go rook h5, followed by bishop f5, blocking the rook from defending the g5 pawn. And this gives white pretty good winning chances. Once white takes on g5, he's going to have an extra pawn on the king side and it's going to be a pretty significant advantage. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.